Good morning everybody. My name is Jody. My husband David John and I have a small farm in the Panhandle of North Idaho. These are stories and adventures. So welcome to Moose Flats Farm. And today we're just going to do a little walk around, see what the status of everything is. And even though technically I could have everything planted, it's about three weeks out from when I normally get the tomatoes and the garden filled up. So even though it's in a state of mess right now, not really feeling under the gun. Plus, I'll show you why sometimes just waiting a little bit and not going and quickly ripping everything out, you can be surprised when something you thought was dead is really not. So we're going to start down here at the house and work our way around. So in these flower boxes, you can see the tulips are blooming in them and I do have a bunch of volunteers not sure exactly what they are so I'm gonna just leave those and wait and see may wind up pulling them out or maybe be a mass of whatever kind of flower that is the little Alberta spruce just absolutely covered with new growth got a geranium pot right here on the one whiskey barrel the million bell hanging baskets and the hummingbirds have shown up and they're just absolutely loving those million bells the little perennial bed in front here got your Columbine, the still be in the back, the delphinium right there, and the little bits of tulips, another a still be, a little delphinium there, and a still be in the back behind the massive bleeding heart, and then this flower pot is a geranium and a trailing petunia. So I'm thinking it's just going to trail all over the front of that whiskey barrel. I have gone through and transplanted a sweet 100 tomato in this urn for down here on the deck for snacking. David John had the choice and he chose the sweet 100 so that's what he got. Over here by the pond, the little maple tree is leafing out and the knotweed is taken off like crazy. A little pot of horsetails. Didn't get, only got one batch of tulips to come back in with the daylilies. Over here in the Mother's Day bed, I've got the Forsythia and the Little Maple. This hot vine is starting to take off like mad. Got some mint growing in here, the Fault Spirea. A little plug of variegated grass, my other hot vine, the little plot of Shasta daisies, and then my third hot vine, which we have to go and fix right up there. The screws sheared off this winter. The crazy knotweed that has traveled from over there all the way under the pond to there.
And in the pond, we've had these water lilies in here, I want to say eight, nine years. The first year they bloomed and have not bloomed since, but this year, right there are two daylily or pond lily blossoms, or going to be blossoms. the end of the pond, the bog itself, and we've only got a couple cattails growing in here, in there, and the other plants that I have for in the bog, they didn't make it through the winter, but the little glimpse in the hoop house from the back side. And yes, I have a couple messes over, all over that I got to get cleaned up, but work in progress. So here you can see the asparagus getting nice and big and no we didn't pick any it went from nothing to big spears have a few mint plants in here and over in this pot I have more mint this is the chocolate mint that I'm gonna take that pot dump it out and split the mint up, put more in the swimming pool, and then some around the fruit trees in the new orchard. But over here in this bed, got the horseradish and the garlics. Have a little chive clump right there. And part of the having patience is not sure if because this blackberry bear root has got growth on it and this one back here has got a little bit of growth don't see anything on the other two but I'm waiting for like six more plants to come in the mail before I get these guys planted so patience little clump of a couple of pots of strawberries the mini roses a raspberry plant and the little evergreen trees and got that chive pot so i'm going to go grab a battery and we'll go into the hoop house So last week it was like in the 80s here, so we did wind up putting the shade cloth on the hoop house. You can kind of see it here on the inside. But the beets, carrots, and peas are really starting to take off. The radishes down here are doing phenomenal. the little chive plant in the back and then that's a, a garlic bulb that I found that was sprouting so I just plugged it in there got your pak choy and what was that the Swiss chard in the back plus the weeds and then over here I did the same thing a garlic bulb and then the chives, the spinach and lettuce and peas, and then the beets and carrots, 
over here well, I guess it, in this bed it didn't germinate as well this one looks a lot better and then the peas in the bucket gonna have to drop that trellis down on them let's go check out the greenhouse itself <coughs> so in here got the little peonies that I started I think I'm just gonna have to get them in the ground they're not doing that great in the pot picked up two of the Marionberry blackberry and two of the black satins. Yeti, you don't need to come in. Got all the tomatoes out here. Have to go through and pick out the ones for me and then have them separated for the ones for sale. And really didn't have much luck on my flower germination. So I have picked up some flowers. I know I work for a big box store and then I buy my flowers from the grocery store. But at the grocery store, I think I'm supporting a smaller farmer as opposed to the big box stores. So. Yeti. So I've got geraniums and petunias for the flower boxes on the chicken coop and down at the seed shed. The marigolds will get planted with the tomatoes. No, what's this? The cannery bells looking pretty good. And I have trouble in here. That little rose is doing good. Buddy. So in this flower bed, the only thing that looks like has survived is the perennial sunflower. Um, nope, I take that back. That little rose has got growth on it. Just have to prune it up and clean it out. The daylilies over here look really good. The rhubarb and the perennial sunflower in that whiskey barrel. <clears throat> that daylily mess can probably take the fence off from around it since the birds technically don't have access to out here. Need to get all the old cut out from around that perennial sunflower. Get the old hollyhocks, but I have a little hollyhock coming up down there. And I have been working on hardening off the baby chicks so they can get moved out to the chicken tractor, which they'll probably get moved out later this week because we're supposed to warm back up. But let's take a peek at them. You guys are making a mess. But they're nice and fully feathered out. Need to get out here and get them their food and water. 
No, stay in little one. But this flower bed doesn't really have anything coming back but the grape. Not sure what I'm going to plant in it, but you can see down there growth buds coming on the grapevine. And way up there, got green growth coming on it. And I have added this panel kind of to help give them some dappled shade in the summer and for the grapevine to grow on. Sultan has been doing his little male peacock strutting. Never can catch him on camera. He's camera shy. And every time I'm ready to get out here and get this pen cleaned up, we get like two days of rain and it just goes back to muddy mess. Oh, and you probably noticed that there was no baby ducks with those baby chicks in there. We actually were able to sell those four, which was really cool. But the raspberry bed out here between the chicken and the duck pen, just have to go through and do a little cleanup on it. And then the geese and turkeys. <clears throat> the other day I didn't get the gate shut and the turkeys have gotten pushed the gate open and now they're just all together. But we did go through on the gonna have to let them out so they'll be quiet. Letting them out to eat the grass when when we're home. They're doing really good about not getting into any flower beds, knock on wood so far. But the other day when it was the super hot, we did go through and put the tarps on the two shed or two bird hoop houses. In here, I've actually got two hens on that nest. And a hen on that nest. And maybe they'll do something. But the potato bed, let's go look at that. Oh, before I do that, I've got this other goose. It's made a nest right there. And no one's bugging her there, so. But really nothing on the huckleberry gold need to go through and fill the Norland dark red holes in because they're coming up really good. It's about 50-50 right now on the purple viking. The Utah gold is about 50-50. And the red Potomac, it, almost all the holes have something coming up. 
So just need to go through and backfill that. But the little orchard over here, <clears throat> everything did really good through the winter. These little grapes have got growth on them. And like I was saying with the, the mint, like that flower box that doesn't have anything growing below, I'm going to plant. But I've got oregano under that one. And this one. Got mint in this one. And now they're going to fall on me. But my hydrangea is loaded with growth, which is really awesome. Somebody got in there. Probably a cat. But I had a bunch of volunteer pansies are coming up in the wheelbarrow and that pot. This is my little echinacea. Really no seedling starts in that pot. But over here in this one, where I don't see the echinacea, I do have some volunteers coming back. And then I've got these pots along the front. I'm going to be planting my personal melon, or the Minnesota midget and the vine peach. Going to hang the green netting here for them to trail up. Probably going to throw some morning glory seeds in there just for color, but I think that will add shade to the seed shed itself. So let's go in and check, uh, check out the seed shed. So my pepper tower is doing okay. I did have like this one didn't make it. So I'll just plant some marigold seeds in any empty pockets. But the rest of the peppers look not too bad. Some of them like that guy there. Unfortunately, when I bought those mini roses and had them in here, I didn't check them for aphids. And they had aphids, so have been doing a, a little bit of a struggle with the peppers and getting the aphids under control. I have it under control now, but they do show some signs of stress from the aphid in infestation. It's one of those, it's an unfortunate when you bring something into your environment and I know better and I, but I didn't even check them. But the Christmas cactuses are doing good. These peppers look really good. Peppers over on this side. The palms and the citronellas that I'm going to have to, let's go over around the other side of them. Going to have to kind of prune them back. 
because I have a feeling if I go to take them out of here, they're just going to fall over. So let's go out and check the garden space itself. So, a big in-ground area. The Forsythia shrubs here are going to have to get pulled out. Some of them died completely almost to the back to the ground. But I have several places that I'm going to be putting them. And over here, the honeysuckle on this trellis. It's got growth coming on down below and a little bit if the camera will focus or not a little bit coming up a little higher up <clears throat> and the next couple things are going to tell you why I'm glad I didn't just rush out here and get this all cleaned out because if I had, I would have pulled up this trumpet vine, but it's got growth coming on it finely. And an other one I would have just ripped out would have been this clematis, but it's got growth coming down below. The Black Knight pansies. This, these two batches survived the winter snow. Where on this side, they did not, but this clematis is just absolutely covered. These two little mini roses fared fairly well through the winter. This one has got some growth way down low. Those two echinaceas survived. And then this bed just needs to get weeded and have all those raspberries plucked out of there. It's one of those, all of my beds need to have a good weeding done on them. And this little rose, it's got a bunch of growth on it. And same with this one. And the climbing rose that I thought was completely dead on this, these two stalks over here, there's a little bit of growth coming up, which is cool. The mess that's the, going to be the corn bed. The apple trees are just about ready to bloom out. The big rhubarb and this little pear, it does have some growth on it, just not what I was hoping to see was hoping there was going to be a lot more growth, but patience. So when we go to plant, this bed here is going to be a tomato bed. 
Not sure what's going to be on the ends of this bed or this bed yet, 100%. But those three are going to be tomato beds. The Weeping Pussy Willow looks absolutely phenomenal. Those are the two window boxes that we've got to get filled. The strawberry bed just needs a little cleanup. Got my self planted my self planted columbines coming back. This bed, not sure exactly, other than I know it's going to get pole beans and scarlet runner beans on it. Have just dumped some potting soil because it is a little low. And I sacrificed this bed to plant more. Huckleberry Golds, it will get the Scarlet Runner beans and green beans on all the trellises. Still need to get that wall cleaned up. <clears throat> but the roses in this bed look like they are completely dead. They gave me about five years, so it's unfortunate that I lost them because they're my white ones but I have to just replant got the geranium and the trailing petunias got a trailing petunia in that pot and that one over there and this pear tree I do have to go through and top it but it did get a couple blossoms this year that rose bed have to get cleaned out. The garlic looks amazing in these two beds. The brassicas are doing pretty good. It's like the cabbages are finally going to look like they're going to form some heads in there. And the other day I came out and there was a duck sitting in the middle of this one bed and she basically ate all the brassicas that were where she could reach from where she was sitting. So I did have to go through and replant a couple of them. Glad I didn't get rid of them all early. Over here got a couple volunteer columbines and strawberries my little shade bed the daylilies are coming back awesome my little hostas hopefully they'll do something this year the little native ferns And then we did get in this bed, it is full of the Ranger russet potatoes. And as far as where I'm going to plant the blackberries, I'm going to clean between the fence and the beds themselves and plant the blackberries all along there. One we'll be able to access for picking on either side of the fence. It'll be out of the way because the half the blackberries I got are thorny ones. So it's not like we're going to accidentally be running into them here. And the birds won't be able to get to them in here, in theory. Got a big old patch of volunteer pansies right in there and I'm not really worried about the 
volunteers being in the walkways because if I accidentally step on them, it's an accident. I try to avoid them, but it just gives a little different color. Because it's like right here, I've got a volunteer chive plant and a thyme plant. Or no. Rosemary. Volunteer rosemary plant and a dandelion that I need to get dug out. But there you can see the pepper hoop house with the shade cloth on it. And down here at the garden gate, I brought the two hanging strawberry buckets, or the two hanging strawberry containers and hung them on the gate there. I figure they should get plenty of sunshine there and it will be nice for snacking. But the change that's coming to here in the next couple days, it's going to look completely different. Well guys, I hope you like the little tour of everything and yes, I had to put the geese back in. They decided they wanted to get it in the flower beds. They've been doing really good for the last week or so that we've been letting them out and today I say it and didn't knock on wood and had to chase them back in. So this is where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you have a good day and a good week and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and until our next adventure. Bye for now.